Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Today we're going to learn about the Richie Kotzen Signature Telecaster. First off, let's cover who Richie Kotzen is. He's well known for being in the band Poison from 1991 till 93. He also played with Mr. Big from 1999 till 2002. But he has this huge solo career as both a guitar player and singer-songwriter, and he's released well over 20 albums. As somebody who's completely new to his work, I would say he sounds a lot like Chris Cornell from Soundgarden. So imagine him singing but having even greater guitar works within the pieces. And that's the best way that I could sum up Richie Kotzen styled music, because this is completely new to me. But for his 50th birthday, which just happens to be on February 3rd, this was the closest Fender Friday that I could do to line it up with that, he's releasing a new album that has 50 songs on it celebrating, once again, his 50th birthday. So what makes this Telecaster special? I mean, from first glance, you can tell this is not your regular Telecaster. It's got some interesting stuff going on here. So this is marketed as a high performance Tele that's made in Japan and they cost $1,499 brand new. And that's just the guitar. You don't get a case, you don't get a gig bag. <laughs> that's how much stuff that they packed onto this thing. So some of the elegant features that you're going to notice right away is the bound flame maple top here. We'll throw it on the workbench to see how thick it is, but it is two pieces and it does move pretty well here. And bound meaning it has binding along the top. That's not something a Telecaster normally has. You're also going to notice that this has a comfort feature right here, kind of like a Stratocaster. It's a very slight arm contour. It's not huge, but you can definitely kind of notice that you have it. You've also got a little belly cut back here that not all Telecasters have. So it's kind of refined in that essence. You've got a burst paint job on the back to showcase the ash body. You have all gold hardware, including the neck plate, the tuners and string tree, and most obviously the bridge, the pickups, and all the control layouts right here. But one additional cosmetic feature is this actually has abalone inlays. So it's not mother of pearl, it's not little black dots or anything, it's something a little bit more special that you're not used to seeing on a Telecaster. And to wrap things up, you have a silk screen of his signature at the top of the headstock. So that's what makes this guitar beautiful and slightly refined for the Telecaster shape. But what else is different about this? The electronics, despite being made in Japan, this has USA DiMarzio pickups. You've got the Twang King in the neck and the Chopper T in the bridge. But on top of that, what do you think this control layout does? It's a three-way toggle switch, so that likely means neck, middle, and bridge. Yes, that's true. Is this your volume knob? Yes, but is this your tone? No, <laughs> this guitar does not have a tone knob. So some people might not like this guitar because of that, but this is now a series parallel rotary knob. So what that means is when you're in the middle position of these pickups, you can switch it between series and parallel. That basically gives you kind of a humbucker-esque tone. It fattens it up. We'll definitely do some tone samples so you can understand that a little bit better sonically. And for whatever reason, if you don't want to buy a made in Japan guitar, you would prefer a USA counterpart. They do not have USA made Kotzen tellies, but the Merle Haggard Tough Dog telly is very similar. <laughs> so similar, in fact, when Robert Baker first bought his before he sold it, that was around the time I did the review of the Tough Dog telly, and I thought they were the same thing, but no, they're slightly different. But that's kind of my first impression of the Kotzen Telly. It's like a cheaper Tough Dog Telly in a way. The finish is a little bit more yellow in person, whereas the Tough Dog was a little bit more orange-like. And I found that this white neck really stands out. They did not tint this at all. It's just like a raw maple look. And it really pops with the abalone inlays right there. So I'm digging that. But the one thing that you're going to notice as soon as you pick this thing up, and if anybody asks me, hey, how is that Kotzen Telly? I'm going to tell them, that is the fattest neck I've ever felt on a Telecaster. This thing is beefy. <laughs> we'll have to get the measurements on the workbench, but if you like fat neck guitars, this is what you want. And the last thing I want to talk about here is the body. It actually feels pretty heavy for a Telecaster. There's a substantial weight right here, so I'm guessing the maple top adds a little bit to that. Well, let's go ahead and throw this one on the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs. 
Inside the Richie Kotzen telly. Doesn't this thing just look strange and naked without the pick guard on it? That was the only way to get underneath this neck pickup because it's only a single route right here. So it's not like those modern day telecasters where you have like a swimming pool under here where you can also do a humbucker and things like that. So modding potential on this thing, I mean, you could put a different single coil in here, but that's about it. And they don't give me a lot of room to work with, but here you can see that this is the Twang King. And the bridge, I didn't feel like taking the saddles off to do that. Sorry, I don't have that much time today. <laughs> this is the chopper tee. But here you can see the top side of the ash body. It has 11 printed in it. And now the big question, is it a veneer or a top? This to me looks like a top. I find it a little bit easier to see right here because you see those two wood grain lines and how they just stop. So the top is just about as thick as you see that finish right there. So it's not as thick as like a Les Paul, but it's just about the same thickness as the binding right here. So that's a cool spec. As far as the bridge goes, this is the string through design with the steel saddles. And this is where things get a lot different on a Telecaster as compared to a USA made one here. You see this, how it's like flat? Apparently that's how the made in Japan ones are done. It just becomes super apparent because you have the binding along the body on this one. It just looks like somebody dinged up your Telecaster. And then the electronics in here, you can definitely tell way different from the American made counterparts. So it looks like they use slightly cheaper parts. You've got a made in Japan pot right there and then your toggle switch is a little bit different. I mean, all this stuff still works though. And this is your series parallel switch on the back side of it. It just looks like a regular knob, but it just clicks into two positions instead of spinning around. Another small difference is look how square this route is in comparison to an original USA made one. It's kind of interesting to see the differences between the USA and the Japanese made ones. The build quality is pretty good on both of them though. But as far as the knobs go, you get the knurled dome style and your barrel style switch right here. So a quick recap, maple top, ash body, this is all encased within a gloss polyurethane finish, but your neck has a satin urethane finish on it, so it's going to be a little bit smoother in feel. A lot of players prefer this, so that's a great playability spec here. Something else you'll notice, this has 22 jumbo frets. These frets are pretty big for a Telecaster, and that means it's going to be very easy to do big bends and things like that. And once again, the abalone dot inlays. That's one of my favorite features of this guitar that I wasn't even expecting when I first purchased it. It was just kind of a, a peekaboo surprise here. But the neck itself is maple. It's got the skunk stripe on the back to put the truss rod in it. And if you need access to that, it's up here. And that's another difference between a USA and a made in Japan. They have this black plastic inside of it instead of the walnut cap up here. And the nut itself is made of synthetic bone. Whoa, I'm a crazy guy. <laughs> Why does that keep happening on these guitars? All right, so next specs here. Our nut width is 1.67 inches, and by the 12th fret, it increases to 2.04. Now, here's the moment of truth. How chunky is this? Jesus. 0.99 at the first fret. <laughs> that is a massive neck. And it stays very consistent, 0.101 at the 12th. I mean, this is just a big, large C neck profile is what Fender calls it. I mean, if you like fat necks, this thing is fat up and down. Moving on to our headstock here. I like how Telecaster's in parentheses. Fender Telecaster. <laughs> I thought you get Richie Kotzen's signature right there. And one string tree. I really like the uh, wood grain pattern right here. That's kind of cool. As far as pickup readings go, neck position is 6.26k ohms, middle position for fun, 3.66, and the bridge position, 8.47ish. It kind of fluctuates. But remember, in the middle position, you can switch between series and parallel, so when you do that, the reading becomes, like, really hot. So that tells you that the tone's going to change quite a bit. And it's still rocking a 25 and a half inch scale length. Moving on to the backside, not a lot to take a look at. It is a string through Telecaster, but even the ferrules that they used are gold. That's a nice little touch and a beautiful ash body here. Tons of wood grain on this. Again, you've got your comfort cuts. Now I believe these strap buttons on this example have been replaced because this one's like a modern day Gibson style. Here's your Fender neck plate. It's also gold and your neck reads made in Japan. And then there's your serial number right there. Moving up the neck again, this does have the walnut skunk stripe here, but it does doesn't end at the top, but tons of nice wood grain on this satin finished maple neck here. And you've got the Godo tuners on here. And I thought this felt pretty chunky, eight pounds, 4.2 ounces. 
Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how it sounds. So this is definitely not your basic Telecaster. This is actually a humbucker in your bridge and mixing that with the parallel thing, it kind of gives you like two different humbucker tones. <laughs> but your bridge is just slightly brighter in comparison. So that's kind of interesting. So it's kind of a dark sounding Telecaster in that aspect. <laughs> So for that reason, I tend to prefer the middle position on this one. Because it's the most Telecaster-like. But I think where this guitar truly shines is the distorted channel. Because that's when you can use your humbuckers to your advantage. So the way I see it, this is a great kind of distorted rock Telecaster. So if you want a kind of traditional but fancy looking Telecaster, but you want all the modern sounds in it, I think that's what this guitar is best suited towards. What are my final thoughts on the Richie Kotzen Tele? This really is an interesting Telecaster because it's not quite traditional, but yet at the same time it is. So you've got the twanginess you've come to expect, but you also have the series in parallel that can kind of get you those fatter tones, which makes this an infinitely versatile guitar. And I love these little comfort features. It's just slightly more comfortable to play this than a traditional Tele, but sometimes you just want that traditional blocky Telecaster feel.
So that might be a make or break type thing for you, but I definitely had a good time playing this Richie Kotzentelli and learning all about him. So that's gonna do things for this because this guitar is actually already spoken for locally. But thank you Troglodytes for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.